I've opened the session called Fade and Crossfade Options. This seems like a good time to look at those options. So let's go to Setup, down to Preferences, and Editing, and on the right are the Fade Options. The default pre-roll and post-roll settings are three seconds. We activate preview and post-roll by going to the transport and clicking that button and that button. And that means that if we've selected something, it will pre-roll by this amount, that little yellow flag. Likewise, on the back side. Now, right now, there's no post-roll. Let's do a one-bar post-roll and see the little flag show up. There's your pre-roll. There's your post-roll. And let me deactivate them. And the little flags are there, but they're not yellow anymore. Okay, so usually when we write a fade, we want to check it in context. We don't just want to hear the actual selection. We want to hear it before and after. Back to preferences. And we'll leave that box checked because let me show you how this works. That's probably the easiest way to do this. So let me click OK. Let's go ahead and write a fade like that. Then I'll do a quick edit here, Command E. And notice that it preserved the fade while I edited it. It kind of messed it up. It's fading now instead of at the end, but that's what the box does. It preserves the fade if you make an edit across or inside the fade. Let me undo that, undo that, back to there, set up preferences. Now, if I change fade out, you saw there that there was kind of a parabolic fade. In the past, we've seen standard fades. Jump out of here and write with the smart tool a standard fade. Let me undo that. Back to preferences. My options are the standard fade or an S-curve, kind of a shelf fade, or at the bottom I have lots of choices here. I can do an absolute brick wall stop, or I can do the parabolic fade. I like the parabolic fade. It's more like the kind of fades we used to do when songs had fades. I can actually get in here and change this line. If I'm back to standard, I can kind of experiment with it and make my own parabolic like a very heavy parabolic or just kind of a nice long arc. And then if you get in here and you start messing around with this line, you don't like where you left it, just option click or alt click on a PC and set it back to the standard. Let me choose parabolic just for kicks. And I'll say, okay, okay, write a fade. And now I get the parabolic fade, even in the smart tool. Now let's look at the options for fading it. It's rare that things fade in, but you have the same options there for fading it. Fade-ins aren't as popular as fade-outs. Let's look at crossfade. So here I can change the in-shape, the out-shape. Let's talk about this middle section. Equal power versus equal gain. The rule of thumb here is it's equal power most of the time because we're usually crossfading between things that are not phase coherent, like the two music tracks that are in my timeline, or from one sound effect to another. So we use equal gain when we're crossfading from one iteration of a drum loop to the next iteration of the drum loop because those things are technically phase coherent. So equal power. You can shape the size and shape of the crossfade the way you want it. If you've experimented and you've kind of messed it up, option click and it'll set it back to standard. You can have a different type of in than the out. And for now, I'll leave them both on standard. Say OK. And I'll say OK to Preferences. There are three handy commands for fades. Down at the bottom, there's Create, Fade to Start, and Fade to End. I can create a fade. These are grayed out right now, and I'll show you why in a second. So let me undo that fade, and then just select an area, and Command F. And it gives me the Fade dialog box. I say OK. And notice that even though I wasn't precise in the area that I selected, it faded to the end. It didn't try and take the fade to where I said was the end. It knows the end and it put it there. So the other two are not areas that you select, but points, specific locations that you select. So let me undo this fade and I'll just select this area here, back to edit, fades, and I'm gonna fade to start and then I'm going to fade, oh, it can't fade to end. I need a different place to start my fade to end. So I'll just go just a bit later than that. Fade to end. There's my parabolic fade out, my straight fade in. If you just want to decide there, the start of the last chorus, the drum fill, whatever inspires you to start fading, 
All you have to do is select the place to start the fade and it will take it all the way to the end. That should give you some good options for fades. Most of the time we're content if it just gets softer and goes away. These choices are kind of overkill maybe, but then again, a well-timed fade can be a thing of beauty. Now there's a lot more about fades and crossfades in the Pro Tools reference guide, but I think those commands will get you off to a good start.